Most people are sure that humans only have five senses, but that's not entirely true. Taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing aren't the only ones we have. Scientists claim that people have between 9 and 20 senses in total. These include thermoception, the sense of warmth, equilibrioception, the sense of balance. There's also the sense of time, although not everyone seems to have that last one. We used to think that there were just eight different blood types, but in reality, there are over 30 known blood group systems. Here on the bright side, our favorite blood group is B positive. Get it? For every pound of fat you gain, you generate one mile of new blood vessels to supply oxygen and nutrients to your body. Your stomach produces a new lining every six days to avoid digesting itself. Nerve cells transmit 1,000 nerve impulses a second. They travel between 1 and 268 miles per hour. Our DNA contains 100,000 viruses. Scientists have discovered one that goes back 100 million years. Your body emits visible light. You're the brightest at 4 p.m., and your glow is the least visible at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Sweat is mostly water mixed with proteins, sugars, ammonia, and a lot of other stuff. It even contains tiny amounts of trace metals like copper, zinc, nickel, iron, and so on. What makes sweat taste salty is the sodium it contains. Plus, the more salt you eat, the saltier your sweat is. Your body's trying to get rid of the excess, and the fastest way is to sweat it out. If you walked 2 miles per hour, you'd have to walk for 20 hours straight to lose 1 pound. And it would take you 518 days and 8 hours to circle the equator. Earwax isn't actually wax. It contains fat, skin cells, sweat, and dirt. Your brain gets three times bigger over the first year of life and reaches its full maturity when you're 25. 60% of it is fat. Your brain generates around 23 watts of electrical power, which is enough to run a small light bulb. Humans can't really multitask. Your brain can't perform more than one action at the same time. It switches between them, which doesn't save time as you might think, but increases the possibility you'll do something wrong and makes the process longer. When you have an exam to take, or you're at work trying to focus on an important task, try chewing gum. Research showed it can help you stay concentrated for longer on tasks that require your full attention. Studies even say that it's a better test aid than caffeine. There's nothing special in the gum, but the act of chewing wakes your brain up. The effect doesn't last long though, just for 20 minutes. Embryos develop fingerprints at three months. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Sunburn is the result of radiation exposure. When your body's natural defense mechanism gets overwhelmed trying to fight UV rays, a toxic reaction occurs that results in sunburn. Goosebumps are an evolutionary reflex left over from our ancestors. The release of adrenaline made their hair stand up, and they look scarier to approaching predators. Your body produces 1 to 3 pints of saliva every day. It helps you digest food and fights off infections. You also have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. Yeah, that's right. The average amount of bacteria in a person's mouth is almost the same as the number of people living on Earth. That's hard to digest. Each human has roughly 150,000 hairs on their head. Every strand grows around one half an inch per month. If we added the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles in just one year. Your hair is also a lot stronger than you think. A single strand can hold three ounces, which is the weight of an apple. If we combine the strength of all the hair on your head, it could support the weight of two elephants. Hey, let's try it. The beating sound your heart makes is the clap of valve leaflets opening and closing. Your heart doesn't replicate itself unless you have an injury. Your corneas are the only part of your body that don't get blood. They get oxygen directly through the air. When you're sitting or standing upright, it's easier for you to recall some positive memories that make you feel good. Some believe it's because sitting up with your back flat boosts blood flow and your brain gets more oxygen, which helps it function better. 
the man who has the deepest voice in the world, and that's definitely not me, can produce sounds that humans, including him, can't hear at all. But elephants can hear those sounds. Veins look blue because light has to go through layers of skin and fat to reach them. Your skin scatters a lot of the red portion of white light before it reflects the blood. This leaves only the blue light to bounce back to your eyes. A person who has anosmia is unable to detect smells. Phantosmia is the opposite condition, when someone smells an odor that isn't actually there. The human brain has 100 billion neurons. It's 73% water, and the same is true about the heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of its liquid, you start to feel tired. It also makes your memory worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a dampener on your mood. The earliest known person to have had blue eyes lived in the Stone Age, 7,000 years ago. Your right kidney is probably smaller and sits lower down than your left kidney to make room for your liver. By the way, your brain makes sure you don't drink too little or too much water. After you swallow some liquid, your mouth and throat start to fire signals to your brain, telling it to stop drinking. Otherwise, you'd keep gulping down water for the entire 10 to 60 minutes it takes the liquid to get to your cells. Your eyes can see something for a mere 13 milliseconds, and your brain will already process this image. The average blink lasts from 100 to 400 milliseconds. Even though the tongue isn't the strongest muscle in your body, it never gets tired. That's because of the way it's built. It's made up of eight interwoven muscles. The tongue is the only muscle with ends not connected to bone. Other muscles join two bones at both ends because that's how we pull and make a motion. There are around 700 different species of bacteria in your mouth. Over 6 billion of them live there. Your skin is your largest organ. It can cover the surface area of two bath towels. It accounts for around 16% of body weight and is around 22 square feet. If you typed 60 words per minute for 8 hours a day, it would take you 50 years to type the human genome. You get tired pretty quickly when you're out in the heat. This happens because your body is trying really hard to keep itself cool, which puts a lot of extra work on it. So you get exhausted and tired, even if you don't do anything physically demanding. Your body has 78 organs, but only 5 of them are essential for survival. The brain, liver, kidney, lungs, and heart. Oh, the phone's ringing. Must be something urgent. At 11 p.m. Only, all the gadgets in the house are silent. It's your ears that are ringing. You can also hear some hissing, whistling, buzzing, and even roaring. But all this noise doesn't have an external source. That's why it's known as phantom sounds. They can occur in one or both ears, constantly or from time to time. They're usually most noticeable at night, when nothing distracts you. Women have more taste buds on the surface of their tongues than men do. That's one of the reasons why 35% of ladies and only 15% of guys are super tasters. Those are people who feel flavors more strongly than others. Left-handed people usually prefer to chew on the left side. And right-handed people, well, you guessed it, chew on the right. Even if your fingerprints are damaged, they'll grow back in the same unique pattern. When breathing, a single lung only uses 5% of the oxygen you've inhaled. So, check this out. There are people who can bend down their pinky without bending the ring finger. But most find it hard or even impossible to do. When they move their middle or little finger, they tend to slightly bend their ring finger too. Yep, me too. Globe luxation is an extremely rare condition when people can make their eyes protrude out of their sockets. Unfortunately, this ability comes with downsides. It can cause numerous eye issues. Some indigenous groups of people, like Tibetans, can survive at altitudes as high as Mount Everest. This rare ability most likely appeared after years of evolution. The ancestors of modern Tibetans lived in high regions for thousands of years and developed red blood cell adaptations, making it possible to survive with dangerously low levels of oxygen. The Baju are sea nomads living in Southeast Asia. These people have evolved an extra-large spleen, serving as a repository of oxygen-rich blood cells. Thanks to that, they can easily spend 5 to 10 minutes fishing underwater without coming up for air even once. Now, about 14% of the population don't have a palmaris longus muscle. 
all. It's actually a rudimentary part of the body, and the need for it disappeared in the process of evolution. So, if you don't have this muscle, worry not. Its absence doesn't affect the work of your forearm anyway. About 5-37% to of people don't have wisdom teeth from birth. These teeth are not really needed anymore. They were important for our ancestors since they helped to chew hard food like nuts, roots, and meat. And saltwater taffy. Nah, I made that up. But since most of the food we eat today is processed, wisdom teeth are now a mere atavism. Most people have just one clockwise hair whirl, but 5 out of 100 people have a double crown. And if both whirls are directed counterclockwise, this makes a person even more unique. Some scientists think there's a genetic link between hair whirl direction and handedness. A bit more than 8% of right-handed people have counterclockwise hair whirls. But in the left-handed, this number grows up to 45%. A man's brain gets older faster than a woman's. As men age, they start complaining about memory problems and lack of concentration more and more often. At the same time, women don't have such acute problems with memory, but they feel depressed more often. Hmm, which one would you choose? Now, when someone is lying, their own nose gives them away. Psychologists from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes goes up. This phenomenon got the name of, wait for it, the Pinocchio effect. Japanese people have particular bacteria in their intestines. These bacteria help them to digest sushi. The Japanese have been eating raw seaweed for centuries. Microorganisms dwelling on the surface of the seaweed got into their bodies and actively developed. Nowadays, the bacteria help Japanese people digest raw food and prevent different problems connected with food. So, people have as many hairs on their bodies as chimpanzees. The hair count of a person and a chimp is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is mostly useless and so fine that it's almost impossible to see. Humans don't have more genes than other species. In fact, people have fewer genes than a worm. Tomatoes also have many more genes than you do. But we are such complicated creatures. Well, recently, scientists have concluded that the number of genes that a genome contains isn't closely connected with the complexity of a living being. Let's take a breather. <laughs> Speaking of which, your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller since it has to make room for your heart. Your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, which are tiny balloon-shaped air sacs in your lungs. People have five most obvious senses – vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But that's not all. How about thermoception, the sense of heat? Or nociception, the perception of pain? Or your body awareness, proprioception? To figure out what it is, close your eyes and touch your nose. Got it? That's proprioception in action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. So your fingers get all wrinkly after you spend too much time in the water. Pruny fingers are caused by the narrowing of your blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area. And this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists think this process helps us have a better grip when our hands and feet are wet. There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with tetrachromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare and is much more common in women than in men. Interestingly, most people with tetrachromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Now, not all people have round pupils. Two people out of every 10,000 have unusually shaped pupils. Most commonly, they resemble keyholes. This eye disorder is called coloboba. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. Only 3 to 22% of people in the world have Morton's toe. It's a foot structure where the second toe is longer than the first one. 
Michelangelo's David and the Statue of Liberty both have this unusual body feature. Hey, toes up! In some people, saliva accumulates in a gland under their tongue. It can then get propelled out in a stream when a person presses on this gland. If the mouth is open at the moment, a jet can reach several feet. This process, called gleeking, can occur spontaneously. A person accidentally pushes their tongue against the gland while eating, yawning, talking, or cleaning their teeth, and voila! Up to 35% of people can gleek, but just 1% can do it on command. I had a friend in college who did that. Yeah, it was weird. About 18-35% to of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. This phenomenon has its own name, the photic sneeze reflex. In the Greek language, it's called sun sneezing. Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's the rubber-like stuff around your joints. Recently, scientists have discovered that cartilage might be able to repair itself, most effectively at the ankle, not that well in the knee, and least effectively in the hip. The human brain is 73% water, just like your heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of liquid, you start feeling exhausted. This also makes your memory get worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a damper on your mood. So drink up! Your brain is constantly processing tons of visual information, around 600 million bits per minute. It all starts when the light goes through the cornea, your eye's clear protective outer layer. Then the light turns into electrical signals. They travel to your brain, and it interprets them into the images you see. It takes milliseconds for this complicated process to happen. People who live to be 110 years and older, called supercentenarians, may have a secret. Researchers have discovered that their immune cells, called T-helpers, might change and adapt to the late stages of aging. These cells are likely to protect them from viruses and other health problems. We've become impressive multitaskers thanks to technology. Or rather, it only seems so. The human brain can't concentrate on two things at once. What it can do is to switch between several tasks really fast. But it makes your attention span shorter and harms your short-term memory and the ability to learn. So put that phone down. (laughs) Unlike our primate pals, many people still have these foot arches. They help us move. This arch is like a built-in shock absorber for your feet. It's what allows us to bounce. There's another one. It's called the transverse arch, running side to side on the top of your foot. Think of it like a bridge that helps keep your foot in shape. Research says this arch is a big deal too. It's responsible for about 40% of your foot's stiffness. Simply put, it's like the scaffolding that holds your foot together. When scientists snipped the transverse arch, the foot lost a lot of its firmness. But when they cut the bottom arch, it wasn't that dramatic. So, is it a modern human thing? Nope. These arches didn't just pop up yesterday. The transverse arch has been around for 3 million years. The bottom arch showed up about 1.8 million years ago. We might as well continue with another element of our feet before moving up to other parts. Our pinky toes are also more important than they seem. Whether you were born without one or have lost it, you can still walk. But pinky ones are important for keeping us on our feet. They provide balance. Inside your foot, you've got 26 bones that team up to make sure you don't topple over. Small toe is a part of this balance work. Our ape ancestors needed their toes to grab, claw, and swing from trees. Today, we've traded our tree climbing skills for comfy couches and binge watches. Okay, let's move up a bit and talk about the appendix. You might think that it's useless, but nope. When a human is in their mommy's belly, this organ starts to do its job. Around the 11th week of development, it starts churning out special cells that produce helpful hormones and compounds. The appendix helps train our immune system's troops, ensuring they're top-notch defenders. It also collects all sorts of foreign substances, aka antigens, from our digestive tract. Yet, as diets evolved, this piece shrank like a deflating balloon. Unlike most other vestigial structures, the appendix isn't always harmless. It can turn into an angry little fireball. By the way, 
Vestigial organs are the ones that have lost their primary ancestral function. These structures mostly lack an apparent purpose. Another famous vestigial example is wisdom teeth. Those are pointless and have been causing us trouble for ages. Yet nearly 95% of us have them. And 90% might even have to deal with the drama of an impacted wisdom tooth at some point. If you don't have them, you might consider yourself lucky. Here's an additional interesting fact about wisdom teeth. Even though your teeth have a mineral softer than what's in shark teeth, new tests show that they're just as resilient. The coating on shark teeth is actually similar in hardness to the enamel on a human wisdom tooth. It's because their surfaces are made of mineral crystals held together by proteins. These prevent them from shattering easily upon impact. So the difference in how we and sharks use our teeth comes down to their design, not their toughness. Anthropologists have examined ancient skeletons. They think our ancestors needed these extra teeth to chew tough stuff, like roots and raw meat. Back then, those extra teeth came in handy. But then, we discovered cooking, and suddenly, our food got softer, and our jaws got smaller. Geneticists have their own take on this subject. It involves a gene called MYH16, which seems to play a role in both brain size and jaw characteristics. Yet, the exact part it played in our evolutionary story is still a bit of a mystery. Now, another pointless thing is the eyelid. Well, not the regular eyelid. You know, that little pink thing hiding in the corner of your eye. Birds and some other furry pals use it to fend off dust and debris trying to mess with their eyes. But in us humans, it's mostly vestigial. Meet the Palmaris longus. About 85% of us still carry it around. Maybe you also have it. You can test it by putting your hand on a flat surface and making your pinky and thumb meet. If you spot a little tendon band doing the limbo in the middle of your wrist, then you've found it. It was there for gripping stuff and swinging around like Tarzan. We can carry on with the grasping trick. Even before you're born, around 16 weeks into your time inside your mom's tummy, you're already practicing your grip. You start by grabbing onto the umbilical cord. When you finally arrive in the world, this reflex helps you hold onto things. Fun fact, small monkeys can hang on one hand for ages, thanks to a similar trick. Yet, we humans lose this super grip when we're around three months old. When you're still in your mother's womb, you also have a mini tail. But as you grow, it disappears, and those tiny vertebrae become your tailbone or coccyx. Humans and our ape cousins don't have tails like other animals. Our ears, too, have vestigial muscles. They help animals hear better and express their feelings. But in humans, these ear muscles don't do much. We've figured out other ways to listen and show our emotions. Yet some of us can still wiggle our ears with practice. Surprisingly, toenails also count as a vestigial thing. I mean, they function as the initial line of defense. They protect the body against harmful microorganisms. In our evolutionary journey, we used our fingernails and toenails for defense, digging, and climbing. In the modern world, fingernails still come to our rescue, whether it's for peeling fruit or that sweet sensation of scratching an itch. Yet, toenails have retired, but hey, we can apply nail polish to them. For fashion's sake, they certainly work for many people. It's not just humans who have useless limbs or organs. In 1798, an anatomist examined a peculiar bird incapable of flying. He documented his observations. This avian species was none other than an ostrich. Ostriches and cassowaries are just a few examples of birds possessing vestigial wings. Anatomically speaking, these are rudimentary wings, incapable of granting flight to these hefty creatures. Yet, they aren't entirely devoid of function. They serve the purpose of maintaining balance during rapid running. Plus, they elaborate courtship displays, helping birds attract potential mates. Now, when it comes to animals, a lot of them glow, too. Around 76% of ocean animals, including jellyfish, worms, sharks, and sea stars, are bioluminescent, 
They have a compound called luciferin that reacts with oxygen to create light. And for them, it serves such purposes as stunning predators, attracting prey, or warning others of danger. We humans can glow too. Unfortunately, this glow is super faint. Our eyes can't see it. Our bodies emit light, but it's about a thousand times dimmer than what our eyes can detect. Scientists found that our glow changes throughout the day. It's the faintest in the morning and the brightest in the late afternoon. Our faces glow more than the rest of our bodies. They think it's because our faces get more sun exposure and have melanin, which has components that can boost light production. Some body tricks distinguish us from the rest of the animal kingdom. For instance, do you know that humans are the only animals capable of blushing? It seems we've got the exclusive rights to this rosy-cheeked phenomenon. When we find ourselves in an embarrassing situation, our blood vessels dilate. That's what gives us those blushes. Embarrassment is a pretty complex emotion. It's all about understanding what others think of us. This might be too advanced for other animals. Interestingly, bald uakari monkeys can also blush, but not in the same sense. For them, this is a show of their good health. Speaking of good health, we should honor our gut. Your gut includes the stomach, liver, and more. It's often called the second brain. This second brain has its own nervous system. It has a hundred million messengers. They send info to the rest of your body. Even if the gut-brain connection is cut, it keeps working. It ensures your digestive system functions on its own. You know what? In 10 years from now, you will be a completely different person. Well, at least your skeleton will be. To reach its adult size, your skeleton went through a process called modeling, which means the development of growth and formation. Turns out it regenerates completely once every 10 years or so. This entire process ensures you always have healthy bone cells, which can support you and provide calcium to your body. And speaking of ways the body regenerates, every second you make 25 million new cells. I'll do the math for you. Okay, that means in about 15 seconds, you'll have made more cells than there are people in the United States. Think about that the next time you feel you haven't been productive enough. Some animals have eyes that need to adapt to hot climates, like camels, for example. Their eyes feature a third eyelid, but these sweep across from the corner of each eye. Because their environment is filled with small particles, they need to clean their eyes more frequently than other species. Now, see that little pink thing in the corner of your eye? It's also a third eyelid. Well, a vestige at least. In humans, the third eyelid is unnecessary because it no longer serves its original purpose. Next time you're tuning into your favorite song, try to pay some attention to your heartbeat. If you listen closely, you'll notice that sometimes your heartbeat may synchronize with the rhythm of the song. Now, not all genres of music have this special ability. But some tunes trigger the release of dopamine, or the happy hormone. This effect may give you a lower heart rate, breathing rate, and blood pressure. And speaking of that healthy ticker of yours, just in case you're wondering, it beats on average about 75 times per minute. This means each year, a human heart can pump enough blood to fill an Olympic-sized pool, if that were a thing. What's even more fascinating is that if you were to connect all your blood vessels end-to-end, -end, it would be able to circle the Earth two and a half times. But that's not good for your own health, so don't do that. Your heart can also continue to beat even if it's removed from the body. That's because it has its own internal battery, which allows it to beat as long as it receives oxygen. If you regularly have your nails done at a salon, you've probably noticed you need more appointments for your fingers than your toes. That's because fingernails do grow faster. The definitive scientific answer is still up for debate, but many specialists think it's because fingernails used to be claws, somewhere back in our ancient history. These days, they're flatter and have widened a bit, and it all happened when primates started using tools in their day-to-day -day lives, like stones and branches. So there was less use for claws. Once they got flatter, it meant nails wouldn't have gotten in the way if primates wanted to use the palms of their hands. 
As for why fingernails grow faster than toenails, the short answer may be the fact that we use our hands more than your feet. As such, our fingernails are more exposed, and we may have evolved to grow them faster. The more you use a certain part of your body, the more it becomes exposed to damage. So for me, I'm in danger of my mouth falling off. Oh boy. Getting back to our hands, it's about time we give a nice shout out to our humble pinkies. We don't see them as being really that important, since we don't use them for holding objects, eating, or writing. But recent studies have shown that losing the pinky on our dominant hands would have a devastating effect. Specialists haven't gathered enough data to supply specific numbers, but from what they've learned so far, losing our pinky would weaken our grip strength considerably, even if it's the lesser-used finger. Adding the ring finger to that and the effect would be worse for our grip strength. Another recent study done in the UK has shown that only about 40% of people are happy with how their nose looks. Regardless of how you feel about it, the human nose is a real-life superhero. That's because it acts as a heater, filter, and humidifier all at once. Inside each nostril, there are small, shelf-like bones that feature blood vessels. They heat the air up before it reaches other parts of our respiratory system. The mucus that's inside there handles making the air more humid. As for the filtering part, that's why we have nose hairs. Small particles get stuck on these small hairs, which helps prevent pollen, spores, viruses, or bacteria from reaching our lungs. Now, when watching cartoons, we're led to believe that the sound our heart makes is because it's touching its environment while beating. Well, it turns out that sound is actually made by the opening and closing of the heart valves. They're like small doors inside our hearts that open and close to pump blood correctly from one side of the heart to the other. For our bodies to work, blood needs to move at the right time and in the right direction, or else. Now, let's talk teeth. Throughout your entire life, you'll probably spend up to 40 days total just brushing your teeth. And in case you're still wondering, teeth are not in fact bones, even though they do have a lot in common. One of the primary differences between bones and teeth is that our bones can regenerate. They are living tissue. Our teeth are not, and they remain permanently damaged once broken. Now here's another shocker. Ooh, we are the only species on this planet to have a chin. There's still some debate about this subject in the scientific community, but one of the reasons why seems to be to make our jaws stronger. As humans have continued to evolve, their teeth and the muscles in their jaws got smaller and smaller. So they needed something to help with increased jaw resistance. Now, most of us have developed some specific traits depending on the area of the globe in which we live. But there is a group of people, specifically those who live in higher altitudes, that develop some pretty cool traits. That's because high-altitude environments come with less oxygen. Not only do these people survive in these locations, but they've adapted so well that they actually thrive. In the Andes Mountains of South America, People have evolved red blood cells that can carry much more oxygen. It makes their overall circulatory system much more efficient. People living in Tibet have to endure similar conditions, but surprisingly, they have adapted differently. In Tibet, they can take more breaths so that they can properly oxygenate their bodies. You've probably heard the myth about dreams only lasting a couple of seconds in reality. Turns out that yes, some of them do, but not all dreams are the same. There are a lot of things we don't understand yet about how we dream. What we do know is that they mainly happen during the rapid eye movement or REM stage of sleep. During this time, your brain is more active, about as active as it is when you're awake. And it's named REM because during the sleep stage, your eyes tend to move a lot. Dreams can happen during the other stages of sleep too, but you're less likely to remember them. As for the length of each dream, they can go from a few seconds to even 20 to 30 minutes. Also, you're more likely to remember a dream if you've woken during the REM stage. Most people have 3 to 5 dreams per night, but some people can have up to 7. I know, seems unlikely, but remember, you immediately forget most of what you dream. Just like we have unique fingerprints, we also develop unique tongue prints. 
Research has shown that those approximately 10,000 taste buds on our tongues are laid out in a -a one-of-a-kind pattern. Truth is, about 80% of what you believe is taste is actually smell. That combination of taste and smell that we perceive is what we come to know as flavor. That's probably because our sense of smell is around 10,000 times more sensitive than our sense of taste. Our mouths have also another cool superpower called mouthfeel. With the help of the somatosensory system, it allows us to sense the texture of our food. The system is activated by physical touches, such as pressure, touch, or vibrations. It's even sensitive to pain and temperature. We also use our tongues to identify the size, form, and texture of food, which is crucial for proper chewing and digestion. A. Tongues are also good for wagging, sticking out at certain people, and trumpet playing. Now, I've tried this one myself, too. Pinch your elbow as hard as you can. You barely feel pain. How come? Well, different areas of your skin have different nerve endings. Our bodies are designed to be more sensitive to pain in places that are at higher risk of getting damaged. Those important parts have more nerve endings so that we're more alert and able to protect ourselves. And thick skin, like that on elbows, has fewer pain detectors. Now, I'm not talking about the tingling, jolting pain you can feel when you hit your elbow against something. Oh, that feels almost like your entire arm has been electrocuted. It's not a feeling I would consider funny, but it comes from the funny bone. Now, the funny bone isn't actually a bone. It's a nerve that starts in your spine, goes through your neck, through your elbow, and through your fingers. Its real name is the ulnar nerve. It's one of the three primary nerves in your arm, and it provides sensation to the fingertips. Your ulnar nerve is well protected by muscle, fat, and bone. But there's one spot at your elbow where this nerve is exposed, and that spot is, yeah, the funny bone. A different but real version of Achilles' story, huh? Okay, so now you know why it hits so different when you bump your funny bone and why you feel nothing when you pinch your elbow. Now, the next phenomenon is related to socially awkward moments. Okay, maybe not entirely. It might happen when your crush gives you a compliment. I'm talking about blushing. Now, I'm not sure those butterflies in your stomach exist when you're in love. But I'm sure of this. When you blush, your stomach lining also turns red. Yeah, I've looked. The stomach lining is the tissue that protects your stomach walls from the acid inside. When you blush, it also turns red because blushing happens when the blood rises to the surface of the skin. This affects the stomach, too. Now, this is a natural process, a physiological response to the change in your emotions. Now, since we're talking about the stomach, it might be a good time to mention that the stomach fluid has the ability to melt a steel table. Yup. This means the acid would be able to digest your internal organs. Luckily, the stomach lining prevents this from happening. Number three is about letting you know that you can glow in the dark. Now, don't turn off the lights just yet. You can't see it with the unaided eye. These visuals of glittering human bodies come from ultra-sensitive cameras. Japanese scientists were the first to capture the images of human bioluminescence. Only ultra-sensitive cameras can reveal that our bodies emit tiny amounts of light, because this light is a thousand times weaker than the human eye can detect. Apparently, all living creatures produce a small amount of light thanks to the chemical reactions in their cells. Humans are newly added to this list. The researchers had been photographing the upper bodies of the volunteers for several days. The results showed that the amount of emitted light followed a 24-hour cycle. The glow is at its highest in late afternoon and lowest late at night. Plus, the brightest light is emitted from the cheeks, forehead, and neck. Interestingly, this does not correspond with the brightest areas caught by thermal cameras. Did you know you're a little bit taller in the morning than you are later at night? Yes, I've been measuring you. (laughs) Seriously. This high difference is related to gravity. Its force compresses the cartilage in your spine and knees when you stand up or sit down throughout the day. But when you're lying down, your spine decompresses and relaxes. That's why when you wake up in the morning after resting in bed all night, you're taller. The increase in height is not even above an inch, so don't bet on who is taller after hearing this information. Fun fact, astronauts returning from a mission are a few inches taller than they usually are on Earth. 
It's because of the lack of gravity on the International Space Station. They don't remain that tall forever, though. When they're on the Earth again, gravity gradually squeezes them back down to their usual height. Now, let's get back to the organ we've already spoken about, the skin. Yes, the skin is an organ. In fact, it's the largest organ in your body. It contributes to about 15% of your body weight. What else does this organ do besides covering your body? It performs vital functions. For instance, it protects your body from external physical and biological harm. Plus, it prevents excessive water loss. Now, I can't help wondering what other surprises the human body has in store for us. But right now, let's move on to the animal planet. Owls don't have eyeballs. Instead, they have something called eye tubes. Their rod-shaped eyes do not move in their sockets as our eyeballs do. That's why owls would have to move their entire bodies to look around. But moving their torsos would make some noise, and other animals would hear it. So owls have evolved to have necks that can twist to around 270 degrees, and they move super silently. But why the concern? Well, night vision requires large corneas to get as much light as possible. This is the main reason why most nocturnal animals, such as the slow loris or tarsier, have big eyes. For owls, it works a little differently. Since they have small heads, such large eyes wouldn't be able to fit inside. Now, even though these creatures don't have eyeballs, they have three sets of eyelids. One set is for blinking, one is for sleeping, and the last one is for keeping their eye tubes clean. So, do the owls give a hoot about that? Yes, yes they do. Moving on from nocturnal animals to the ones you're more familiar with. Meow. Cats have an extra organ that allows them to taste scents in the air. This organ is called Jacobson's organ, or the vomeral nasal organ. Jacobson's organ is located inside the cat's nasal cavity and opens into the roof of the mouth. This organ can detect specific chemicals by using nerves that lead directly to the brain. That's not a regular sniffing, though. The odoreceptors of Jacobson's organ aren't designed to catch ordinary smells. They detect chemicals that have no odor at all. In other words, cats can detect undetectable smells. It's not just this. Jacobson's organ increases the sense of smell. For instance, when kittens need to find their mother's milk, imagine there are two mother cats and four kittens. Kittens can distinguish their mother from the other grown-up cat with the help of their sense of smell. Now, when two people meet, they assess each other's body language. Cats can usually do this by sniffing each other's heads. This greeting releases pheromones that can tell a lot about one cat to the other like what the other feline likes to eat, or if they are healthy or not. They can even evaluate whether the other cat is happy or moody, all thanks to Jacobson's organ. Now, another fact about cats. Their nose has distinct ridges that look like a pattern. Similar to our fingerprints, every cat has a unique nose print. It can be used as a form of identification. Okay, cat, we can nail you for breaking the vase. We have your nose prints all over it. Now, do you want to cut a deal? Just tell us what you know about the dog and that chewed-up DVD. Dog lovers? No, I didn't forget about you. Here's a myth you've probably heard. Dogs are colorblind. But they aren't. However, it is true that the color range they can detect is limited compared to the spectrum humans can see. Their color palette consists mostly of yellows, blues, and violets. Our reds, greens, and oranges are not noticeable to them. Now this one is about turtles. These animals cannot leave their shells and get back whenever they want. In fact, they are completely attached to their shells. These shells grow with turtles, similar to the human skin. A turtle's shell consists of 50 bones. It also includes a skeleton with the spine and rib cage. So they go on vacation with it. It's kind of like an RV that you can't get rid of.